Strange. Get a sense that the spoons are beating out some kind of rhythm. A message. Trying to tell me something. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. What a pigsty. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. she was changing into a monster, recorded it in her diary. Poignant. Spoon's incredible. The craftsmanship. Must have graced a rich man's table. Spoon's incredible. The craftsmanship. Must have graced a rich man's table. Smashed mirror. As if someone couldn't stand to look at themselves. The monster. Journal's author, maybe? No spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally, still searching for the right spoon. Skeletons. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It'd make sense. White that lives here? Definitely afflicted by a curse. And it's been trying desperately to lift it. Broken neck, indentation in the skull's lateral surface, smacked in the head with something heavy. Right arm bit right off, teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. No claw or fang marks, probably choked to death. does seem like a white's lair. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Cauldron I was looking for. White's not particularly tidy. Table's set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. Regis needs some brew. Afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands. And their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron.
not gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. Tried to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. Just need a bit for Regis. And now we'll tend to you. a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. stench. Easy, not gonna hurt you. Eat. I, I must eat. I'll take you someplace safe. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. 
an ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlene didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. your friend's hand will make for a nice broth? Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our Codex commands. A raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Pretty helpful creatures. Calling them often? I try not to overdo it. But they can be so useful, as they were now, when I merely needed to be sure I could arrive in time should things go sour. Managed to find a loan, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned the last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help. Right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement. But, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. All right, so what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesha Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There, we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Tesha Mutna. What's it like? It is a place of torment. A torture chamber. Long ago, Shortly after we'd arrived in this world, one among us named Kagmar developed such a taste and lust for human blood that in one night he could imbibe an entire village. This brought trouble on the entire species. 
Common folk wearied quickly of living in constant fear. They began to hunt us. Seek the aid of mages and witches in tracking us down. So what? Not like they could ever hope to kill you. But they were bothersome. Forgive the comparison, but when did you last enjoy mosquitoes buzzing around your head? In any case, the other vampires decided something had to be done. Kagmar had to be caught and punished. A torture chamber was thus outfitted in the dungeons of Teshem Mutna. Inside it, a cage made entirely of a special alloy of silver, dalvinite, and meteorite steel. Kagmar was captured and locked in the cage. Sat there over two centuries, driven to fury time after time, never able to escape. Thus I know the cage will withstand the fury to which we shall drive my humble being. See no reason to dawdle. Tesham would now take me there. In a moment. Just one last thing. What was that? Uh, blood. Oh, the last favor the raven did me. I've also taken some Sangurium, a solution that sharpens one's sense of smell. One drop of blood shall smell like a gallant to me now. You crazy? You're a recovering addict. <laughs> Your outrage warms my heart, Geralt. But you must remain calm. I have no choice. As things stand, the die is cast. <sighs> High time we set off for Tesh and Mutna. My head's spinning already, and you're... you're starting to smell quite tasty. And you're starting to scare me.